So Gary, what is the number one mistake the founders do when they pitch companies? It's the number one mistake that founders make when they pitch companies. Mm -hmm. If you do not know the answer to a question, you must acknowledge it. The, the number one reason I don't invest in companies is because I ask them a question that I know the answer to and they give the wrong answer or they dance around the answer. Okay, this is not a real call with Gary, just some video editing magic applied, but his opinion was real. And the question asked is very relevant because fundraising is a tremendous workload. At times, it becomes a full-time job for startup founders. So in this video, I'll break down what needs to be done and how to get ready to succeed in raising money for your business. This video is based on various materials I have researched over the years including Paul Graham's essays such as Fundraising Survival Guide, How to Fund a Startup, How to Convince Investors, numerous guides, videos and articles from Y Combinator Startup School, as well as the best-selling books on this topic. If you really want to get specific, the available content is unlimited, feel free to check it out. I will attach all the links in the description below. The first question is when do you need to raise money? Here's a note from the YC founder. The easiest way to fundraise is to indeed have a good metric that's growing. When I ran a startup that wasn't growing, I spoke to 140 investors and only got two angel checks. Now I am working on a startup that is growing and almost every well-known VC is trying to figure out how to talk to us. It took us one week to raise our seed round. As time goes on, it's becoming easier and cheaper to build and deliver a sophisticated web or mobile product. Even hardware can be rapidly prototyped and tested, especially now with all the AI tools. And that's why before giving your money, investors are looking for proof that you are already building something that people want. Therefore, founders should raise money when they have figured out what the market opportunity is, who the customer is and why they have delivered a product that matches their needs and is being adopted at a rapid rate. This is very important. You shouldn't raise money to validate the idea. First, it will be incredibly hard, if not impossible, to do. Second, you should fundraise when you actually need money for your business to grow. And remember, the earlier you raise money, the more diluted that capital is. People are not going to give you millions of dollars of valuation unless you have something to show them. So before raising, validate the idea first. I have a great tutorial on how to do it. And then it becomes much easier to fundraise because your business concept is now proven and you can demonstrate it through your key metrics. Now that you've established that this is the right time to raise money, you need to approach this task professionally. The co-founder of Y Combinator, Paul Graham said, raising money is the second hardest part of starting a startup after making something people want. As I said, for a certain period of time, it becomes the founder's full-time job. I like to think of it as a B2B sales process, which works in the same way. You have to qualify leads, reach out to them, and track every stage of the sales funnel using a tracking list or CRM software. This is really a typical sales pipeline. You start with prospecting, then you qualify the investors. You want to make sure that they are interested in the field that you operate in. Then the outreach stage, perhaps negotiation and closing a deal. It is important to track this process because when you have a hundred potential investors, some of them may not respond to you, perhaps because your email got lost or something like that. By having them in your CRM system, you can follow up and hopefully continue the process. However, you are not in their sales funnel, so it is your responsibility to keep track. The last time I did this, I used Notion, which is super convenient and easy to use. I will attach the link to this template in the description. Now, which type of investors should you consider for a seed round? There are friends and family, there are accelerators, angels, seed funds, VC funds, and there is crowdfunding. There are so many places to raise money from. And the important thing in figuring out who these investors are, how to get meetings with them, and how to convince them to give you money is understanding their background and what motivates them. So take the time to do your research. It would be a waste of effort if you reached out to a VC that specifically invests in real estate startups when you are building a solution that is related to blockchain technology, for instance. Later in this video, I'll show you a few sources where you can search for potential investors. But now let's discuss how to reach out to them. The best way to get connected is through an introduction. That's really the best conversion rate you can get if someone introduces you to an investor. It is also a part of your research stage to figure out 
who can make an intro for you. Obviously, the closer their relationship to the investor is, the better. The second option is to find personal contact details. You spend time looking for the personal email address of a specific partner at the particular VC fund or a particular angel investor and you email them with tailored emails to attract their attention. And another option is to take a shot in the dark and send emails to generic addresses like info at vc.com. It is believed that the success rate of this approach is around 1%, but you can still try your luck and and play the game with very low probabilities. Some founders also use tricks, such as attending a big event where investors can meet a hundred people in one evening, and then they email those investors, starting with, we met at the conference last weekend. I have no idea if that strategy has ever worked for anyone, but some people definitely do this. Anyway, cold emails are still good, they are working. Usually if you send it to a personal email address, the person will reply, especially if the email is well constructed. Let's have a look at the example of a bad cold email. Dear sir or madam, while conducting online research, I came across information indicating your involvement as an investor in technology companies. I would like to take this opportunity to introduce you to a lucrative prospect within the dynamic and thrilling industry. Would it be possible for me to schedule a one-hour meeting at your office during which I can present this opportunity to you? Yours sincerely, Bo. If I wrote this email, I wouldn't get a meeting with that investor. I haven't told them what I do. I don't seem to have done any work to understand what they are interested in, who they are, what they've done, and I am asking for an hour of their time for a meeting. That's a lot of time. So, how do we construct a good cold email? By doing research. Nowadays, all the information is available. Investors do a lot of interviews, write articles, blogs. They like to tweet about things they are interested in, companies they invest in. And my task is to do this research and come up with the custom introduction that is relevant to them and to me. Here is an example of a good cold email. Hi, David. I am building a B2B marketplace for local retailers and craft brands. I have a novel approach to this, the product selection is optimized by AI and all of the orders can be paid for within 60 days after the purchase. We have launched and we are growing 10% per week. I think you'd be a great investor for us because of your experience with FIRE. I think we've sold unit economics and reliability. Can we discuss this for 15 minutes. Happy to email if that's better for you. Sincerely, Bo. In this email, it is clear that I've done some research on David. I know that he built a marketplace for local retailers in the past, so it is relevant to him. I also might know that he is interested in AI technology. I clearly state the stage we are at. Launched and growing 10% a week. Launched means that I am actually doing things. And 10% weekly growth rate is very impressive. It's kind of a benchmark that indicates that you have found the product market fit. If you are really growing 10% a week, say about this in the first email. It will definitely intrigue and trigger this, you know, fear of missing out. If you don't yet have this growth rate, say we have launched and are just starting to grow. It is also intriguing and it makes them wonder how fast you are growing and how you are measuring your growth. Then I say about their experience and why they would be a relevant investor for us. I know how much they talk about unit economics and reliability and that's why I mentioned that as well. So every part of this email is curated for this particular investor. There is now a much higher probability that they will reply because it doesn't feel like spam, exactly the same as in sales. That's the reason why one of the most important things in building a startup is to know your customers. When you're selling, if you know your customer's pain and you address it very specifically, it makes a huge difference and it becomes hard to ignore. Now, which kind of materials do you need to prepare for successful fundraising? There are four main things. The first one is your pitch deck. I will attach the links to very detailed guides on how to prepare it, but in a nutshell, it shouldn't be too long. From 9 to 12 slides is enough. On your slides, do not include a lot of text. It is usually very hard to read it. Actually, the best way is to prepare two versions of your pitch deck. 
feedback. One that goes with the viral presentation and another one without your comments but with more text on the slides. Pitch deck is basically a presentation of your startup. You have to present the problem, the solution, the customer, the market, the competition, your current traction, business model and the founding team. No need to write it down. Again, I will attach my fundraising file containing all this information. The second document is called Executive Summary or Teaser. This is a one-page document that should include your vision, product, team, traction, market size and some information on financials. Revenue, if there is any and prior or current fundraising milestones. The next one is the financial model. This is your financial forecast, what you're building, when it will become profitable, your unit economics, profit and loss assumptions, and burn rate, financial milestones, and so on. How much money do you need to raise? And how long can you sustain with that funding before the next milestone, meaning the next funding round? All of these questions should be answered. And also these calculations demonstrate your expertise, your level of expertise, and how you are going to make your business profitable. And the last document is the cap table or capitalization table. Cap tables are commonly used by startups and private companies to track and manage equity ownership. Previously, it was usually done in spreadsheets. Now, there is a great startup called Pulley, which provides cap table management. It's very easy to use and I definitely recommend you check it out once you need to prepare your cap table. Now, it is in your best interest to put hundreds of hours of work into the preparation of these key fundraising documents, because this is everything your potential investors would see to evaluate your professionalism. Make sure they are done according to all the best practices and standards. They are all available on the internet for free, and you don't want to show your disrespect by sending out poorly prepared fundraising materials. All right, previously in this video, I said I would share some tools you can use to look for potential investors. There is Crunchbase. I showed how to use Crunchbase in another video. Feel free to check it out. And there is another source called Razor.app. They provide a database of almost 40,000 investors and you can filter by industry, geography, stage, etc. That's it. I know it was a lot of information, mostly high level details, but only because all the content is already out there. I think it is going to be my longest video description in terms of useful sources and links for you make sure to check them out. If you are going into the fundraising cycle, remember getting rejected is a part of the process. Don't give up after the first five rejections. Give it a hundred tries instead, but with very carefully qualified leads. There is a great book, by the way, titled Without a Doubt, How to Go from Underrated to Unbeatable. It is written by the YC partner and it is exactly about this journey. Please share your feedback in the comments. Thank you very much for watching and let's build something people want.